these days there are like many tools for loop development. We have like a memory uh, substance, and they are great tools for for authoring shaders. But the problem is they have like uh, unlimited control, where you don't you don't you don't have like um, a total control for for the light rig or or settings like uh, for example um, IOR or subsurface scattering or other ones. Uh, finally, what you want to, to do is to, to bring uh, the, the maps to your default 3D application um, and finally like uh, build a shader tree that um, can get like a quad complex like this one, especially if you are for VFX. So for example, I really like um, doing this for displacement layer where you can like uh, import your, your different maps. In this case, it's for the cloth shader. So I have like um, the cloth uh, width pattern that I made with a simple Maya cloth node. So with this, um, uh, like uh, this is the, the cloth shader. It can become like uh, really complex. You have a lot of control for the weft or the warp color. Uh, albedo and this this is like um, some uh, frequency noise fractal maps Maya's internal fr fractal maps so they add like um, a layer of um, folds and and not like a really um, flat surface so it adds like uh, another layer of um, photorealism so what I finally like to do is to, to take all these maps, all this uh, shader tree, and and bake to to a single um, texture map. Uh, why? Well, there are several reasons. For one, um, if you don't um, use like, if you use like uh, fractal maps like this one, uh, they they lack um, the proper texture filtering. For example, for the cloth node, if I go all the way back to here. It doesn't have any filter control, so what you get finally is um, some more effects like this one that are like uh, they are worse uh, when it comes to animation. So what you want to do is um, to back to a texture map and then add some some filtering on top of um, your normal like uh, Gauss filtering, and and then and then also. Uh, for example, for skin shaders, like uh, what I like to do is to, to on top of my um, uh, secondary forms and uh, tertiary, I like to add like some noise noise texture node. This is like uh, for a really like a sandy, really fine pores to recreate. Um, some very very fine uh, pores uh, in the skin to simulate skin roughness. For example, in this case, uh, it will be like uh, these very very small bumps here and there, much much smaller than than secondary and tertiary forms. The problem with this is that these these fractals don't have like um, the proper texture filtering. This doesn't actually work. So what you want to do is to make uh, these maps into into texture maps. So you have like proper filtering and and a fixed uh, detail. Because in this case, uh, even if you apply this to, to your skin shader, uh, it will heavily depend on on the final uh, image resolution or or distance to the mesh. For example, this. This render was like um, at 540 pixels high, and it's like uh, quite shiny. And this is uh, 1080 pixels high, so you can see that it's uh, way rougher. But um, the fractal map is actually the same. So what it means is that you don't have a constant uh, result of of your of your skin shader. So what you want to do is uh, to bake um, these maps uh, by ways of 
Maya's built-in um, baking texture or your render engine baking options. But uh, this also leads to, to several problems because uh, they don't actually work when you have like uh, complex shader trees like this one. For example, say we, we want to, to bake um, this um, displacement tree. We were like uh, to create the surface shader node <coughs> apply to this and then to my mesh uh, I have to select um, the displacement node and render with the built-in options And it renders black, so as you can see, uh, it doesn't really work. If I were to use um, Redshift, uh, for example, we have here to select our mesh and then with these settings, say make. As you can see, it won't work either. What you have to do is, um, my solution is to actually um, render your mesh as it was another image, like um, to take the mesh, uh, flatten it out into uh, grid space, and then render as you were normally going to render another mesh. Uh, for that, I like I found this this very useful uh, script that I modified to to make it work with um, several uh, objects. For example, for a single object, it is quite easy. It is now on, on UV space coordinates. But I modified it so you can you can use it on on several objects at once. But um, another option, uh, if you want like a more control for for your shaders especially if you are going to, to export to Marmoset is to divide your, your mesh uh, into UV shells because uh, Marmoset doesn't uh, support UDIM tiles so what you want to do actually is to uh, to separate, this is another uh, script I made For example, um, you want to bring like each of them to to from zero to one uh, UV space. In this case, it will be like this, but I'm not going to do it. But you you will have to do this like uh, for for each for each part. In this case, what I'm going to do is simply to to take all these parts and, and convert to UV space. And finally, you have like uh, all the parts here into UV space, but uh, what you want to do is to, to set up uh, the camera to, to render this like um, 
at each quadrant at a fixed resolution um, and aligned to, to the grid. So what I made is uh, this grid that uh, will align the, the front camera uh, correctly into, into UV space. For example, in this case, to render at 4K uh, only the, the first UV, UV tile, you will do this, you will hit apply, and you get this. Um, for example, at 8K, you want to render two tiles. You want to render two tiles from the second tile. You want to render the second row, or just one using tile. And what all this does is uh, like um, modify a few, like a few settings, like the translate, and also. Also, uh, this parameter here, and a few more like uh, the rescan, and nothing else. So um, you you can go to the video description and and get the scripts. They are free, and and use them willingly. Thank you.